This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 178 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Hot horses and hot co-hosts. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections offers the whole universe of shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford at equestriancollections.com. Plus, Kentucky Performance Products, scientifically proven products for your horse. You can find them at kppusa.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop. With weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hail or high water while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable scoop, stable scoop, stable scoop. I'm Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Now, Glenn. Yes? Did I talk to you since last Sunday? No, we have not. No, and I think I saw on Facebook what you want to talk about. I just realized that we've been <laughs> we've been working on this show for a couple hours now, and I just remembered that I have some big news. Yes, you do. My little B, my little Gracie, did her first rated show. Rated even. It was a rated show. It was a C, whatever. You know, it wasn't yeah. like double A or anything like that. But it was a, an official show, rated show, and um, she rocked it. She did Barrel such racing? a great job. She did uh, walk trot. She did walk trot, walk trot equitation, oh, okay. and walk trot pleasure. Okay. And uh, she rode uh, the little pony that she's been riding up at Nora Harris's place, named Nutmeg, little pony oh, mare, who's pony. about twelve hands is high. It, is, and, it, is it nutmeg colored too? It's nutmeg colored. She's a little chestnut mare, and she's really, really, really fuzzy, and she has like a full body clip. <laughs> She has a hunter clip, so her legs are really fuzzy. Oh, I saw that picture, and it was so funny because the whole body's clipped, and these legs that have three inches of hair. Are people so- are people who don't know horses. They, they're like my friends and family. They're sending me message saying, "Why is the horse pony wearing leg warmers?" Or is that- that's, that's, that's her funny. hair. It's funny when you see it with a pony with that much hair. She's got a lot of hair. She's a fuzzy little pony, and she's a tiny little thing. So the funny, the best thing about it is, um, so this is Grace's first, you know, real show, and um, she's only been riding Nutmeg for a couple of weeks since the beginning of December. And uh, but she, because the pony is small, Grace is really uh, learning to be a driver instead of a passenger. Right. And that's a big deal for, you know, a kid who's almost nine. This is just about where Grace is in her riding. And in the ring during her lessons, the pony's been sort of acting up. She's she spooked a couple times and scooted. And, you know, she tries to do things on her own. You know, she's got her own opinions. So Grace has been really learning how to gently but firmly keep the pony in line. So she, Grace was pretty nervous that perhaps Nutmeg might spook or do something naughty at the um at the show well let me tell you this kid she goes mom i got butterflies in my stomachs we're standing at the in the in gate i am a wreck there was my <laughs> face was devoid of color my knuckles were white i have no idea why i was so nervous for her and she's like she's standing very quietly on the pony gracie is you know and she's like mom i have butterflies in my stomach what do i do i said just Tell them you'll feed them later. <laughs> I said, they're probably hungry. We'll feed them later. And she went in there, and that kid rode better than she's ever ridden before. She totally brought it. Wow. That's like, cool. you know, some people unravel when they get show nerves, yeah. and then some people get even better. Well, I'm looking Grace. at the pictures of her and the look of determination on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Reminded me of you, actually. I, exactly. I know. You've had, you have a couple of pictures of me where I'm pretty determined. <laughs> That's it. She's little Helena B because 
that kid just brought her game when she really needed to. So for that, I'm incredibly proud of her. And, and of course, the pony was wonderful. She, ow, oh, the best part about it is it's a walk trot class. And um, Grace isn't cantering on her own yet. She canters on the lunge on a different horse, okay? So during her very first class, the pony breaks into a canter. Oh, no. So, of course, she got points deducted for that. But, but she, she rode that on. canter. No, she didn't just stay on. She rode it so beautifully. Everybody <laughs> who knows her is like, awesome canter. That was great. She didn't care what color ribbon she got after that. All she talked about was the fact that she cantered. Well, and she got the best color ribbon there is. It's not, <laughs> not blue. For it's, little kids, it's no. not blue. It's not blue. She got some pinks and whites. She got, right. I mean, there were five pink kids. Ribbons. In, That's what they want. They want the pink. <laughs> she got, and then one of them had like a little horsey pin on it. And, um, you know, and, and she really didn't care what color ribbon she knew, like when her name was called fourth and fifth and last, she knew that she didn't win. But, um, the judge later went up to our trainer and said, I really, really, really wanted to pin your kid on the pony. She was clearly the best rider out there. He's like amazing, exquisite equitation. But every time I turned around, she was on the wrong diagonal. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like her mom, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> so that was a really big deal in, our, uh, in, in the Horse Radio Network family weekend. Well, great. Congratulations, Gracie. She must have been very happy. She, was, she wore her show shirt to school the next day and took all her ribbons. <laughs> That's good. She probably can't get in trouble for bringing ribbons to school. <laughs> Cannot get in trouble for bringing ribbons to school, no. That's very cute. Very cute. And the pony's cute, too. Oh, God. She is adorable. Nutmeg. Kind of looks like a nutmeg. Perfect little pony. Just enough sass to, uh, to be interesting and fun. Well, that, and that's good. I mean, that's good. You want them to learn. <laughs> well, that's what I said. You know, she's great for, um, for kids to learn emergency handling. You know, if you're, you're going to come off, come off something small. If right, somebody's going to... Go. Yeah, if you're, somebody's going to act up, well, a small pony is much easier to to manage than a you know bigger horse. So uh, this is a really important chapter in Grace's uh, education and in becoming a driver versus a passenger. Well, congratulations, mommy! You made it through too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the hardest part, I think. Sometimes I know. I had to come home. We all came home and took a nap. <laughs> it's not the kids; it's the parents. I know. Tough, 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 have the tough time with it. Well, um, what, so today we're having on with us a little bit later here, we're having Wendy, Dr. Wendy Ying on with us, who's the co-host of the Driving Radio Show. She's coming on, uh, to be totally honest, uh, we asked her to come on at the last minute because our guest postponed till next week, about a half an hour before showtime. So we're going to have uh, our guest on next week, but we got Wendy to come on today and talk to us about hot horses. Uh, so we're going to be chatting about that a little bit, which I think will be fun. But first, we want to talk to you about hot products, and they would be found at Equestrian Collections. It's that time of year. I would like to say that it's that time of year when you really need a lot of blankets, but I bet you blanket sales are really down this year because it hasn't been that cold any- everywhere. I, it's barely gotten below 50 here in New England. I know. <laughs> Last year this time, we were buried in snow. I know. So um, we had an ice storm. You guys were buried in snow. Ugh. Uh, so, you know, who knows? But but uh, the, you are going to be needing some products. And if you have a little leftover Christmas money, maybe, they have huge sales going on right now at equestriancollections.com. You can find anything from blankets to show clothing. I saw I saw Gracie in her fancy little show outfit. I forgot about Jodhpur's. It's been so long since I've been around little kids at shows. I forget about the little the little thing they the leather piece they wrap around their leg there. Well, thank God for other kids and you know who show because we pulled that outfit together. That everything was borrowed. Well, <laughs> everything it's time to go except to for Patty collections. <laughs> so can, she's serious now. She's going to be going to shows all the time. You and are not kidding. You can find all the little kid stuff you want at equestriancollections.com. So stop over there as you're needing stuff heading into spring here. We're talking about spring already because it feels like it, I guess. It does feel like spring, yeah. So heading into spring, I'm sure winter is going to deal us a mighty blow here before it's done this year. We have it coming. EquestrianCollections.com. Now, Dr. Wendy Ying, co-host of the Driving Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, my co-host over there. Thus, I am with two hot co-hosts today, and that's appropriate because we're talking about hotness, and we're going to get Wendy on to chat a little bit right now. Well, hi, Wendy. Uh, Thank you so much for hopping on over here to the Stable Scoop Show this week. 
Well, hi, Glenn and Helena. How are you guys? Good. We appreciate you joining us at the last minute here. Uh, <clears throat> our guests sort of canceled out on us, and we're going to be getting that, uh, talking to them next week. But uh, I thought, well, we can have Wendy on because I, there was a story this morning, and I know Helena has something she wants to talk to you about too, but i got to start with the silly stuff. There was a story that I saw on the news this morning. You're going to love this. <clears throat> and I want to know, would either of you have done this stupid thing this guy did? So this guy's name is, let me find it here, Dustin Bruckhart. He's 29 years old, and he's from St. Ignatius, Montana, which is one of those little towns that you can ride your horse around, and you can take your buggy through town, and it's, it's one of those Norco type of towns. And, yeah. well, he, one night, Monday night exactly, Dustin and his buddy were out driving around, and they saw a horse and buggy tied to the Old Timer Cafe. Well, the horse was starting to act up, and he realized when he was watching this scene that the horse was getting ready to uh, break the bridle and bust loose and be out of there. Well, that's exactly what happened. The horse broke his bridle, took off down the road, on the way down the road, ran the carriage into at least three parked cars. Oh, so he's carrying the car- he's got He's still hooked up. He's still hooked up. So we got horse and carriage at a bolt down the road, heading toward the highway. That's so- sad. Yeah, so this is bad. So you can just picture the scene. You, you, you just pic- can picture this scene. I don't think it was an Amish horse either. This was just somebody who had driven his buggy. Probably was drinking heavily and thought, well, I'll just drive my horse. So, As you do. <laughs> <laughs> so he's heading down the road. Car, the buggy smashing into cars. And Dustin gets the brilliant idea that I'm going to stop this horse and buggy before it gets onto the highway and somebody gets killed. So he tells his buddy in the SUV, the driver, to pull up beside the horse and buggy, and he's going to climb out onto the running boards of the SUV and jump into the buggy. So, and you can picture this right out of the movies, right? But the horse doesn't have the bridle on, right? The, right. Well, that's part of the story. So he, ha- oh. he does this. He gets on the running board, hanging onto the roof rack, gets beside yeah. the buggy, jumps off into the carriage, reaches down, grabs the reins, and realizes they're attached to nothing. The oh. guy had taken the bridle off and put a halter on. So, <laughs> so he's got nothing. So now you have Dustin Bruckhart, cowboy wannabe, on the carriage with no steering or control of the horse going, now what do I do? Because the horse is still going for the highway. Now, right. but the difference now is he's on the buggy. So he does the only thing he could think to do. He jumps onto the horse's back. And you know what kind <laughs> of tangled up you can get in the harness. <laughs> Right. When you do that, he jumps onto the horse's back. Well, he still had no way to stop the horse because there's nothing to pull on the horse with. Oh, my God. So what did he do? He reached down, and this is the quote. Uh, let me see if I can find the quote here. This is a good, a good quote. It's kind of funny. I was able to finally grab an ear, and I yanked on her hard. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he took an ear and pulled away. And he said that the horse pulled, made a left, he grabbed the left ear, the ho- horse pulled into a driveway, and he was trying to grab onto the other ear so that she would quit turning. And uh, apparently then the horse went, r- went right, and he went left and came off and onto the ground. But it did enough to, to get the horse's attention that the horse slowed down, didn't end up being on the highway, and was fine. Now, Mr. Oh, uh, <laughs> this guy, uh, Cowboy Wannabe, Ended up in the hospital because he had torn ligaments in his left knee and a potentially fractured ankle, and he's lucky that's all that happened. So my question for you, Wendy, is would you have done this? Um, no, <laughs> I wouldn't. But, you know, that's why one of the biggest things that we say at uh, driving events, you know, when you go to any driving events, whether it be a show or a group drive or whatever, you never take the bridle off the horse when they're attached to the carriage. Because right. you just don't, because stupid things like that happen. And then if they start running with the carriage, they have no bridle on, you can't stop. And, you know, when your horse is running with the carriage, it's different than when it's just running free with a saddle on, because the carriage keeps making noise, they're scared. And most horses, when they're running for, like, more than a minute with the carriage, they want somebody to help them. Yeah. But they're afraid. And tired. You know, with just the halter on, what can you do? But, you know, there are some people that do that. They take the bridle off and then tie it with the halter to a post or something. 
but it's it's dangerous. Now, I my contention is that any horse person in the right mind would not do this. A non horse person would try it. Anybody who knows anything about horses would have said, "Get out of the way." <laughs> I know, and Karen's if you're feeling coming. that way, you should have laughed through this. That's what I'm thinking. Right? Do something to. Uh, I I would probably try to think of how to lasso the carriage and put the brakes on the rear brakes on. Yeah, but this could, well, this may is, not have. Well, the the brakes on, they they sometimes run more. You know, like oh, really? then they pull stronger against oh, right. the brake. Right. So, um, or maybe got in front find, of it. Some, yeah, there's some awesome video of. Uh, Boyd XL uh, had a crash at the show, and all the people came out of the carriage, and then the team was running with the carriage through the show. And some guy who is, like, in my opinion, this hero, he he himself, I can't remember his name right now, he's a pony driver, and he ran up to one of the leaders and grabbed one of the leaders and, like, dragged them down, and they ran in a circle and then stopped. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he was hanging was off of the harness? Well, yeah, but he grabbed the reins right oh, near the bridle. He was hanging off That's a rein. That's a lot of gear to... to <laughs> yes. At that point, yeah. I think the horse is like the least dangerous item in that wreckage, yeah. you know? It's yeah, all that so up. this guy, was he grabbed a forehand of horses oh my God. and uh, a marathon team carriage. They were up to a marathon team carriage, which is 1,300 pounds, running, mm-hmm. galloping. Oh, <laughs> my God. I don't think I would jump... I, I don't... I mean, I know that I would some. I would have to do something that, like, my adrenaline and my busybodiness would just insert me into the situation somehow. Like, I know I would yeah. act, but I don't think that I would do what he did. But I, I definitely know. I don't that- even think I would think of what he did as a possibility. <laughs> I'm wondering. They don't say what his blood alcohol content was. I'm kind of <laughs> well. You never know. You know. You kind of go where your strengths are, and I don't. I think that's not something you think about. Like a, a lot of people say, uh, when somebody does something heroic, uh, you know, another person, a bystander, might say, "I would never have even thought to do that." But you just yeah. act. Everybody says that I just acted, and I think we tend to act based on what our strengths are, what we know our bodies and our minds can handle. So maybe this guy just would feel more comfortable making that kind of physical exertion versus trying to, you know, calm the horse down. Maybe you and Wendy and I, maybe we would do something more along the lines of um, behavior versus like brute force. Like block traffic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Whistle. (laughs) Whoa, horsey. Scream. Whoa. (laughs) So Wendy, now beside the parade we were in where we almost killed half of Georgetown, um, (laughs) have you you ever... (laughs) Have you ever had any experiences with the runaway like this? Um, yeah, I've had lots of that. Uh, you know, that's part of carriage driving, really. You're going to have something happen like that. And, um, you know, there's been lots of times where it's either been me in that situation. I haven't had any very, and I'm me knock on wood, bad runaway situations. Uh, but, um, you know, I've been on the ground when the, this kind of similar situation happened where like we were training hazards and I was a, a ground person and this lady hit a post and her, the carriage rolled over so the ponies ran but there were enough of us that we kind of you know cornered it and they stopped and like for my own driving experience I remember the closest I came to real disaster I was driving my Irish draft horse who was like 17 hands and I was a beginner driver then and I was um having this lesson and my friend was watching me, and I was coming around the corner and then going to extend across the diagonal. And when I came across the corner, when I turned around the corner, my rein, my right rein just, like, went out of my hand and, like, flew out of the carriage. Oh, jeez. So now I only have one rein, and my horse is getting ready to, like, zoom across the diagonal. And I was like, shit. I just, like, panicked, and I actually was turned. And he hadn't started lengthening yet, so I just jumped straight out of the carriage and, like, jumped down and grabbed his head, grabbed the rein. And grabbed the loose rein. I grabbed the loose rein. Well, it was just, like, flapping in the wind? It was flapping in the wind. Oh, my God. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my God. And that was, like, after that now, I mean, Gordon, you probably noticed, I uh, have much longer reins than I need now, and I always sit on them. Yeah, she does. I, I, I did notice that. Yeah. I always sit on my reins, and a lot of times I have them connected together. Like, sometimes when I'm driving tandem, I don't have them connected. 
but almost always have them connected and I sit on them. And then in marathon, actually, you know, we have a marathon belt that's not, um, you can't tie yourself to the carriage. So this belt goes around my waist and my navigator holds the strap of it. So if I hit a bump, I, the, the belt holds me in. But if we roll over, then they can let go of the end and my belt comes free. So a lot of times I put the, um, you know, my reins buckle together um, at the end. So I put the loop of my reins, I put my buckle through the, my uh, belt through the loop of the rein. Oh, so okay. that way, if I lose my reins, it's, they're still attached to my belt, and my navigator's holding the belt. Now, that is, of course, you get bounced out of the carriage, and your navigator goes with you at that point. <laughs> yeah, if we all get bounced out of the carriage, then then is the that... belt is gone, the reins are gone. <laughs> is that like uh, driving turbulence? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, driving turbulence. Driving turbulence. But when you're doing so... marathon, a lot of times you hit roots, like um, in... Uh, when we used to show in New Jersey uh, at the at Gladstone, um, that place is so bumpy. I mean, people used to fall out of the carriage all the time up there. I think there's some videos of that too, actually, of uh, people falling out. I tell this story yeah. all the time. The most dangerous <clears throat> situation we were ever in was during a red rose carriage drive, and I think I told Wendy this one. We used to do four-hour drives, and halfway through the drive, you used to stop and have a picnic. And it used to be through cities and towns, and they used to have police escorts and stop traffic and everything. So it was, it was well organized. Well, we stopped at the Lidditz Park. Well, the Lidditz Park was right in the middle of town, and there were probably 30 carriages, rigs, p- tandems, four-in-hands, singles, ponies, everything you can imagine. And we're all parked there. Everybody's out of their carriages. We, we're holding our horses, or uh, we're we're at the somebody's. Some of them are at the front of the horses. Some of the horses are just standing still. And right beside the park, right at the edge of the park, is this train tracks that never has a train until that moment when everybody is unprepared, eating their lunch, and a train oh pulls up right beside everybody and squeals its brakes. It stops, oh my God. stops right beside us with those squealing train brakes. Everybody knows that sound. Mm-hmm. And half the carriages, the horses took off at a dead run. The one that was right in front of us, my pony reared right up. I've never seen her rear. She reared straight up, and I managed to hold on to her. But but the carriage right in front of us had a pair, big, big horses too, I remember, uh, almost killed a seven-year-old kid that was about 10 feet in front of him just walking along, and those horses took off, and they came within a half a foot of running her over. Oh, my God. Uh, and then horses were down the road. Horses were everywhere and carriages everywhere because nobody, you know, everybody was eating lunch. And right. This, and then the train insisted on going back and forth, back and forth, and <laughs> people ran over and tried to stop him, and he said, I'm sorry, I can't stop. <gasps> Jerk. And we all just had to leave because he kept doing it. And it was, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the scariest situations I've ever seen. That kid is lucky to be alive today. And uh, I bet a lot of people come away from those situations with, uh, you know, you have those near-death experiences and you come up with pretty quick a way to prevent that from ever happening again. Like Wendy's belt and, you know, you just, you totally change your ways. Okay. Oh, we never stopped at that park again. I could tell you. <laughs> Including avoiding <laughs> <Yeah>. certain areas. <laughs> I don't need to ride by there. I don't need to drive by there. I'll take the scenic <laughs> route. Well, this lead, sort of leads into the story of, because uh, this horse was probably a little hot that this guy had to try and stop. This leads into uh, Helena's question for you today. Well, you know, this is something that I think about not only with, with my own horses, but I, you know, the whole issue of, um, like you guys do on Horses in the Morning, you talk about these really bad ads and horses are for sale and record numbers and they're being turned into, you know, rescue organizations and record numbers. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that people have horses that they just can't handle. And when I shop for a horse, I look for temperament first because I need something quiet at this point. And, you know, I'm watching a friend of mine ride pie who's definitely a little hot. Um, And you see different things from the ground than you do about your horse when you're in the tack, I think. And uh, one of the things I noticed about uh, my friend riding pie is that he's just an up horse. He has a very distinct personality, which has a lot of energy. He's the kind of horse where you have to ride his mind, not his body. And, uh, you know, it's, it got me thinking about how to work with an animal's temperament instead of, instead of being afraid of the hot horse um, or the high energy horse or the forward horse, how to get 
instead of trying to change them to be more calm and relaxed and mellow, what do we do to manage that behavior? And then what can we do to ourselves maybe to, to deal with that behavior better instead of trying to change it all the time? Um, well, that's actually, you touched on a lot of different things on that question. And I guess the first thing I would say is, um, remember we talked about the five elements of personality? Yes. So the, the horses, you have to decide, are they hot? Because they're, um, you know, they love the limelight, they're superstars, they're just like up kind of horses. Um, and we talked to a guy actually on the dry radio show, Thorsten Zerandowitz, um, and, you know, though he, he has a lot of hot horses. He's famous for taking hot horses and making them good. So, so those kind of hot horses, they can be champions. They're superstars. They got in the ring and they want everybody to see them. And that's a fire type. Yeah. Um, then there's a water type that is going to be a, described as a hot horse. But they're more fearful. And those are like, you know, they're hot because they're looking at everything. And they're, they're like looking prepare to react you know they they are gonna they're kind of spooky and a little bit crazy and then uh they have add so it's hard for them to pay attention and then um there are ones that maybe are not necessarily um hot in their personalities but it's something in the environment that's making them hot like they either have like um from outside stimuli, making them crazy. Like, uh, Glenn always likes to tease me about the parade. But the horse that I had that was crazy at the parade is actually very dead quiet. But he just couldn't take the marching bands and the flags and the activity and the yelling. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, or there are some horses that, um, I had a little thoroughbred horse that was um, off the racetrack. This is when I lived in California when I was in college. And, she was a great horse, but I ended up getting her for free because she was donated to Stanford Polo, like one step away from going to the, you know, killer because she was crazy. But she was crazy because she lived at the Thoroughbred Training Center, which uh, her stall was in the infield of the track, and she lived in California, so she was only in the stall all the time, no turnout, and she was eating alfalfa cubes while other horses would, like, breeze around her all day. And then they would take her out, and this little kid would try to ride her. So um, I guess we can start there. Like, if you have ones that are not hot in their personality, because they're usually calm, but there's some outside stimuli, you can change that. So, like, this little horse, when she came to me, she was at a different situation where she had turnout 24-7. It wasn't a lot, but she had, like, a little stall and then a little paddock and friends, and she didn't eat outside, so she ate, you know, oh, hey, and barely any grain. And um, she got out, and I fox hunted her. So, yeah, she was a little hyper, like, the first, you know, half an hour. But after galloping for two hours, she decided, well, it's not, you know, I'm okay with this. <laughs> or, like, Alfie at the parade, you know, if you know you're taking your horse to some place that he gets a little bit afraid, then that's the time when you do something like, um, like, I use a magnesium supplement called Nupafeed. And that's a calming supplement. That's a natural supplement. It's just magnesium. Um, you know, some people use, uh, you know, I mean, you could always use sedation, um, which is not good to show or ride with. But if you have to do a situation where you're handling a horse and they're crazy, like a horse that's too hot to get their feet done, you can sedate them. Um, or you can use herbal supplements. Um, I have a great herbal supplement that's for, uh, horses that they're just a little bit too hot for the job that they're doing. So that would be like a long-term plan to put them on a herbal supplement. Um, and then, of course, change their diet. I mean, don't feed them a ton of protein and sugar and keep them in a stall and then right. think they're going to be quiet. Right. I mean, you have to always look at their environment. I, that's, I look at their environment first. Is what am I yeah. doing? How am I keeping them that could be contributing to, um, you know, the behaviors that are difficult to manage? And, right. you know, so you get yeah, cut out the sugar, get them turned out. But then, you know, there's like 
<clears throat> you take that horse out and you're going to work them that day and they're re- more reactive than usual, let's say. Um, yeah. You know, what do you do? You gallop them around for like, you know, you don't put them to work right away. Maybe you take their warm up and instead of walking for 20 minutes at the, you know, walking quietly for 20 minutes, because this horse is not going to be able to walk quietly. So maybe right. you just let them go right into a nice canner and, and just go. Let them get that, that, you know, zing out. Um, yeah, and I would say that, like, you know, that brings us into the other two personalities is that, uh, like, you have to kind of decide, is this one, like, not paying attention or are they scared or what? Like, so so there are some that, like you said, I would take and gallop them or something, not, or, like, control canner so they blow off some steam. But there are other ones that, because um, I actually have had a lot of the harness horses, and you do not, like, Dutch harness horses, if you gallop them, they'll get progressively more and more crazy. Right, right. <laughs> I've seen so, that happen. Um, yeah, and then your arms get tired, and then you're tired and frustrated, and then they're still crazy. They never get tired. So uh, with those kind of horses, I would, you know, put them on a 20-meter circle and do transitions, like walk-trot transitions, for, you know, or or yep. trot around a little bit and then walk for two minutes and then trot around a little bit and walk, but do a lot of things to engage their mind or change direction a lot so that they're like, oh, we're working. Not just, I, I, I mean, I, I have made the mistake of just like trotting around thinking, why isn't my horse getting any better? Right. But now when I started riding dressage, I think that's the biggest thing that I learned in riding dressage is that they, uh, you know, do so many transitions to solve their problems, which I think is a really good way to address issues like that. So just like with a three-year-old kid, you know, I started distracting my horse the way I would distract my child. It's, oh, would you like a cookie? You know, oh, stop crying. <laughs> stop crying now. <laughs> have a cookie, have a bottle, have a blankie, look at this cute little toy. And then suddenly they let go of whatever anxiety they've latched onto. And yeah. you, but then you start to, as you grow with your child, as you get to know your kid, you start to understand why he or she behaves in a certain way. And so with your horse, if you have, if you consider that animal's feelings, their, you know, temperament that day, you know, what, what, what they ate, whether or not they got out, is it raining? Is it cold? Is it hot? How much work have they had? If you take this stuff into consideration and then change what you do with them versus trying to force them into what you want to do that day. You say, yeah. okay, I got to, I have to read my animal today. What is he or she ready for? And then modify yeah, your, I think that's huge. it is huge. And it, you know, but it takes a certain amount of, like I said, consideration, um, for your horse. Like you have to consider it a partner instead of yeah. getting on and saying, you're going to do what I, this is what we're doing today and that's just it. And if you're not going to do it the way I want you to do it, well, you know, then and you I'm going to make you. And I'm going to make, or I'm going to make you. And then you like crank up the, it's just, I've seen more horses chill out and relax on the buckle after going around like a freight train for an hour. And the minute yeah. the person just, you know, throws the reins away, the horse goes, oh, thank you. I just needed yeah. to chill. But yet they're oh, so well, afraid you know, to give that rein because the horse is so hot, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a lot of times with showing, um, uh, you know, just going to a show environment, your horse is going to act totally different than when he acts at home. So if you don't know how to read your horse in different situations, so you're going to go to a show and then they're going to, you're going to be like, well, why aren't they like they are at home? So you need to read them when they're at the show. Like, is it a big show where there's lots of people and they're picking up on that? Or is it a little backyard show and they are just like at home? But, um, you know, so you need to be aware of what they're feeling that day, and and you need to have like tools in your toolbox to 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 help them feel better and to, and perform at their best. Like I a lot of times go out and drive in the morning if I'm at the show, or I drive at least once, even if only for 15 minutes, and then untack them and put them away, and then tack them up again. And I I used to have a pony actually. If I didn't do that. He was like totally wild because like the first class is always wild. But if he was untapped, he was like normal. He was like dead quiet. So then I would say, well, why am I blowing the first class at every show? Why don't I just tack him up, drive him around and then 
unpack them and then take them back out. Hmm. You know, it was just a little thing that he did. And I think that a lot of horses respond to that. So you're getting to a point where like they, every time they go out, they're like being anxious about what you're doing, then maybe go and do something else. Change it up. And even you know? if you don't know what yeah. they're being anxious about, try changing it up. Yeah. Go like stand over here and eat grass for 15 minutes and then go back to work on what you're doing. Because sometimes also it's you, you know, I remember, um, I mean, even now, if I have a bad day or I'm fighting with somebody or if something happened or I'm stressed out, I don't go try to ride because mm. it's not going to be good. We all know that, you know, because your horse is going to pick up on that. Or if you don't have, if you're like, okay, I can get on and I can ride for 30 minutes and then I can get to work. Well, you, I mean, no you way. can, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be good for the horse. No, because that, ge- that agenda is not hidden. It's not in your own mind. It's, it never is. Yeah. It doesn't stay there. And you, I'm the same way, Wendy. If I'm having, if I'm grumpy and I go, oh, I'll get on my horse and I'm not, you know, spending time with my horse will make me feel better. It doesn't. It, it's just, I get yeah. frustrated and, and angry and upset. And, you know, maybe I'll go out there and play with them on the ground. Right. But I think a lot I'd of people do. Chill ride. Right. It's just something chill, <laughs> something. Yeah. But, um, and I think that's another way of, uh, of managing yourself versus managing your high energy horse or even your horse. Like, I'm sorry. I, if you're the kind of person who says you never say anything bad about your horse, I think you're a big fat liar because there are times where I'll look at my horse and go, you're an ass. (laughs) It's just plain and simple today. You are. And I, you have to learn any other relationship. Exactly. (laughs) He should like, he's allowed to be, I'm allowed to be. He can be too. Right. There are good days and bad days in every relationship. Exactly. <laughs> now, I do have to ask and, you, know, sometimes Wendy. they feel physical. You know, like sometimes they feel a physical thing and they just can't do it. And you think, oh, they're being an ass. But, you know, maybe you, that could be an issue too. And some horses deal with pain. They're stoic and they're fine. And others are like, oh, my God, I am brewing an abscess and I cannot walk. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? Instead of saying, oh, why aren't you doing this today? Or you're like the worst thing in the world that I could hear is, oh, my horse is just lazy or he's being naughty or he doesn't want to work. Yeah. And I'm thinking, yeah, no way. And I'll say the the biggest the issue when I see that is like either bad fitting saddle or some back pain because that just smolders and then the horse's back hurts. And then every time you ride, they think it's going to hurt. Right. And then start to get anxious about it. So that's always something if you, if your horse started out wonderful and then has progressively gotten worse, maybe time for somebody to look at it and give it the once over and, you know, see well, if there's some pain issue. And I know we're going to run out of time here shortly, but I, I wanted to take it to the extreme now and ask you if there's a word in Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine for a horse that is just bonkers and is just out there, has a screw loose. Um, and do you believe there are horses like that, that you just, you're not going to be the one to save this horse. It, it's, it's time for, for you to give up and you're so, so, so somebody or something does not get hurt. Well, um, there's not like any one word for that, but, uh, like it's their Shen is their mind, right? Mm. So that's the word in Chinese is Shen. And, uh, so some horses are like so abused that their shen, we call it their phlegm, misting their mind. So we have treatments for that, but I'm, I mean, those horses are going to need, that's something you have to decide if you're going to dedicate yourself to give that horse what he needs. And that would be like, uh, like, are you the type of person to adopt a abused crack baby? You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cause that's going to yep. take a lot of care. If you're not willing to do that and the horse may never do what you want to do, maybe this horse will only be suitable for like trail riding or, you know, whatever. But if you want to go to do some shows, but this horse has just been so abused and crazy that you can't go to the show. So that's not going to work out. Or there are some that are so fearful that you have to be prepared that every day is going to sleep with you. And are you willing to put up with that every day? And you have to be you have to be humble enough to say this, what this horse needs is beyond the scope of what I can give him or what I want to. Right. 
And that's a hard thing. A lot of women don't want to let go of that need to rescue something or fix something. Yeah. Or, and that really know, works out in the relationships with men, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a time when you have to say, I have to walk away because this behavior is never going to change. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for men and horses. And yes. We'll end on that. and <laughs> that's yeah. the biggest tool in your toolkit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wendy, for joining us today. We really pre- What fascinating conversation. And that was, you know, I think that uh, uh, I think as of course people and uh, even all pet owners, I think we all relate to that issue. So, yeah, because you have those aggressive dogs, and you you, you have that with with almost any animal and humans too. Yeah. yeah. And cats. Look at your cat. Yeah, look at my cat. <laughs> now that's crazy. No, uh, that's crazy. Plain and simple. There's no Chinese word. There's no no word for that. There's no any word for that. Why his name is the beast. No. Beast. <laughs> the beast. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, but all right. Thank you, guys, all so right, much. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right. See you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. I love having Wendy on. Oh, she's such a treat. She is. She's just so wise, and she's funny, and she's normal. You know, I she know. gets it. She's not. She's never too full of herself. For somebody who's so knowledgeable, she's really very humble. I love that about and her. So darn smart. She has like dozens of degrees and stuff. I know. <laughs> Brilliant. Which again, and yet she's still so humble. If I had a dime for every PhD I met who was. Arrogant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and dumb. Her dad, she gets it, uh, I think, uh, she, she gets it naturally because her dad was a uh, brilliant man who apparently started several technology companies and uh, really was at the top of his field in the day of mm-hmm. technology. So she comes by it naturally. She does. And we, we, we're very happy to have her here on the Horse Radio Network. And I'm, I'm always happy to have her on Stable Scoop. Yeah, I just let you two go, pick, pick, because yeah, I knew you just wanted to pick her brain. So was, I know. I was kind of wondering. I thought maybe I heard you snoring. No, there. no, I was. It was very fascinating. I so just thought, you came well, in with a couple of good stories with your ponies. You have, you do have some good stories. Yes. Well, we've done a lot of things. I know. <laughs> some Although, of them really, not wise. But... <laughs> <laughs> some of them. Not. Some of them. The be- the person who has the best stories about hot horses is your wife, Jennifer. Yes. Well, she's, she's... owned a few. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have, and actually, she, we should do like chapter two of this episode because talk about having tools in your toolkit for managing different kinds of horse behaviors jen has a mighty toolkit yes and but but at the end and the reason i brought that up at the end there about or is there a point where you just say i can't do this it's yeah. beyond me is because she has done as as experienced as she is i know she has done that too where we've gone we can't help this horse this horse is beyond what we can do i've seen and i've been a part of that with her for for two particular horses and uh I thought, wow, really? If you know, if Jen can't fix this, then well, and there, I think there comes to a point too where you realize that somebody is going to get hurt. Is it worth it? You know, the horse is going to get hurt, or you're going to get hurt, or a, a member of your family is going to get hurt. Let's say, yes. And is is that worth it? You know, you have to you have to go to that point and finally say, is that worth it? And and usually it's not. It's what Wendy said there. And if you if you if you saw the movie Buck, you saw the film. Yes, it um, did. You know, that horse in there, it wasn't that horse's fault, but that didn't change the fact that that horse was going to kill someone. Right. And, yeah. the, and at that point, the most kind and humane thing to do is to take him out of the equation. Right. And, and, and that's what they did in the film. Yeah. There. I don't want to yeah. have a spoiler, but I think anybody that's wanted to see it's probably seen it by now. Uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of situation where you have to just determine that you're at that point. And, and you know, hopefully you have a horse that's never going to get to that point. That's, but that's, first... Yeah make it a point to build your toolkit, to have a toolkit. Take a look in your toolkit, your mental, your emotional, your financial toolkit, and say, what's in my toolkit that can help me with this horse? And you don't know, if, be afraid. Do not be afraid to get help. Yeah. Or stubborn about it like me. Oh, I can do it. I can do anything. But you, no, you I did can't. then. With Pi, you've gotten help. I mean... You, I've always gotten help. And in, in, with... Uh, yeah, especially now that I'm physically less able to help myself. Yeah, it sort of forced you to, but you have probably been to that point anyway where you would- I was I was I knew that I was going to need help in certain areas. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to put the miles on him in certain ways that um no, I knew that I was in uh, in over my head. I did. I did. Yeah. And Unfortunately, your knee knows it too. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, let's talk. All right. Let's do tack and habit segment right now. Cue the music. Cue the music. Choose 
use Kentucky Performance Products supplements because the horse that matters to you matters to KPP. This week, I'm going to tell you about Elevate Maintenance Powder. This time of year, horses are consuming very little grass and may not be getting enough natural vitamin E in their diets. Horses in rigorous training, seniors, brood mares, and stallions often require additional levels of vitamin E to meet their needs. Now, vitamin E is nature's most powerful antioxidant, protecting your horse on the cellular level. KPP's Elevate Maintenance Powder supports a strong immune system as well as the healthy muscle function necessary for top performance. So when you do need to supplement with natural vitamin E, choose Elevate Maintenance Powder. It's research proven, it's effective, and affordable. For more information about Elevate Maintenance Powder and all of KPP's products, log on to kppusa.com. And I uh, actually, I was there this morning, at, you know, as this show's coming out on Friday, I was over there doing the Horses in the Morning show live from their warehouse at Kentucky Performance Products. They had a, built a new warehouse last year and uh, was over there checking that out and did the show right from their offices, which was kind of fun. Getting Does it smell good in there? Yes, it smells like supplements. It smells exactly like supplements. Yeah, because they put all that good stuff in to yep. make the supplements palatable and... Yep. I yep. know we it have the a uh, sweet, almost like molasses kind of. We have the contribute. I use the contribute for uh, my horses, and it smells like bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the horses are like nom 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 nom. Like bubble gum? It's well, it's liquid, so they they lick their bowls afterwards. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to know why you picked this particular product because a variation of, of this has been around forever. Yes, um, I, I absolutely love Purina Equine Senior. Um, the first person to turn me on to the Purina of horse brands, horse feeds, is Jennifer. And uh, we started with Purina Ultium, and that was back when Zeke and I were hunting uh, two or three times a week. Uh, he was on, I don't know, some kind of pretty nasty pelleted feed that uh, he just he didn't look thrifty. You know, for lack of a better word. And so Jen had, had suggested Ultium. When I switched him over to Ultium, Oh my gosh, and within two weeks, everything about this horse changed. His eyes were clear and bright. His coat blossomed. He just had an overall look of healthiness. His hooves, uh, whatever he wasn't getting in his previous feed, he was getting in with the Purina brand tenfold. So as he moved into retirement, obviously you don't need as much protein and fat and all that good and sugar that was in the Ultium. So, um, Jen had suggested Purina Equine Senior, and I consulted with my vet as well. And the vet had said that Purina Senior Feed is truly one of the few feeds that can call itself a complete feed, meaning it has everything it needs, everything your horse needs in it. Um, and uh, now they've gone through several different formulas. You now they've added things to it to really make it make it easy to eat. You can soak it. Well, that's uh, one of the easy. things I know Jennifer True. liked about it is she likes to make mash, yep. and uh, it, it breaks down good, well for mash. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it, it comes in a complete pellet and, and an extruded nugget. It's like an extruded feed. So it's got some, you know, it's a little bit sticky. It does have a little bit of, of sugar in it, um, but not a whole lot, you know, because obviously our senior horses don't need that. But it does have a high fat content. So if you have um, a hard keeper, I think it's even good for some of those high-strung thoroughbreds who could use more fat and oils in their body, but not, not more sugar. Mm-hmm. And um, so my vet had said that if, uh, if my horse, like because Zeke's teeth are wearing down and he's starting to quid his hay, which means when they chew it and it balls up in their mouth because they can't actually grind it down as yep. well as they used to. Uh, so when a horse starts quitting, you can actually put a horse on Purina Equine Senior and take him off of hay completely and still be assured that he or she will get all the nutrition they need from this feed. And that's three different vets from three different practices have all said the same thing about this feed. And um, I've switched him to others. I've tried others. And nothing gives his coat. I had to say his coat, his eyes, you know, um, that, that bloom that he gets when he's on the Purina Senior Feed. All right. Well, of course, you can get that in any of your feed stores. And is it expensive? It's a, Yes, it is on the expensive side. Um, in New England, we pay anywhere from $21 to $25 a bag for a 50-pound bag. Um, but, but you're not to me, feeding tons of it either. You're not giving them 10 pounds a day. No, because yeah. really your horse is not in work. So you're, right. it's more like a supplement 
I don't want to say a supplement, but it's more to make sure that they get the vitamins and minerals and, um, you know, combination of things, combination of nutrition versus the quantity. Right. So no, you don't have to feed a whole hell of a lot of it. And, um, but I would definitely suggest that you, uh, just do a quick Google search on Purina Equine Senior and a, a full list of all the benefits of this feed will come up and, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it to try it, but definitely give a, give it a full month. And you'll see a difference in your horse. I did for mine. And that's true of any supplement or feed that you do give. And the other thing they have now is the Purina Equine Senior Active. It's the uh, it's a new formulation of the Equine Senior. And it's for your horses that aren't retired, that are still doing work. Like I drove my pony until she was 35. So, you know, for those that are still active, you're still maybe trail riding them, things like that, then uh, they have the Equine Senior Active for horses as well. And, and this is not a paid commercial. None of our tack and habit segments are, nope. uh, this is just stuff that, uh, we observe as we're going through life with our horses. We are. And you know, many, many years ago when I was, um, a small animal vet tech, we used to feed, uh, Purina brands. The vet used to feed Purina brands, a very specific Purina brand. Um, in their office, you know, not the store bought stuff, but definitely a Purina brand. And so through my years, I always kind of keep an eye on, you know, Purina was, you know, they're, they're the big name brand, but what they have to go along with that name brand are the funds, the resources to go into, into research so that they are creating a product that's good for your animals. That's you know, right, they're, yeah. they're already there. They've arrived. They're not climbing to the top and have to make all kinds of false, false claims. They're there. They can do the research that says... This is the food that's good for your animals. And, you know, over 20-something years working with animals, I have to agree. They're in the right place. When we talk to a lot of the grooms for, for the professional riders, uh, they use Purina. And one of the reasons they use it is because they travel so much to different parts of the country. They can count on the same formulation in the same bag no matter where they buy it in the country. Exactly. And, and that consistency is so important when you're dealing with a, you know, a, a high stressed horse like uh you know like competition horses are so that's the reason that they they use purina is is they they like the consistency around the country Mm -hmm. Um, all right great so that's uh thank you very much helena i am working on a different one for next week i'm hoping that i can get her on the phone with us she's from england and i'll tell you more about that next week but i'm hoping for a unique tack and habit segment next week Mm, okay. So I'll well, let you know. Okay. It should be fun, and I, I hope I can get her. It's going to be depend on timing and and everything else. When you're trying to book the guests from England, it's always a little bit different because we have to count on the time differences. So, you just like talking to those hot British women. I do. I do. I love those <laughs> accents. I love those accents. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you, Helena. We better get out of here. Thank you, everybody. I wanted to remind everybody, we got a couple emails this last week, and I'm trying to do this on all the shows. I just want to remind, because we have so many new listeners, of how you can listen to our shows. Uh, And I know that sounds silly simple, but it's not so silly simple for a lot of people. Obviously, the easiest way to listen to our shows is to go online to horseradionetwork.com, has all the shows, and you can listen to any of the shows there. Just click on the episode you want to listen to and hit the play button, the little green button, and you just hit play and it plays. Now, that's at your computer. If you're listening on uh, your phone or your iPod, the easiest way to do it is to go to iTunes, go to the podcast section, search for Stable Scoop Radio Show. It comes up. And you can subscribe to it from there and have it automatically downloaded to your iPhone or your iPod or your MP3 player. If you have a smartphone, an iPod, or an Android, go to the App Store, and there are a number of applications that help you listen to podcasts. Uh, One of them is called uh, Podcaster. Podcaster is one of them. And the nice part about downloading one of those applications and, and They'll cost you a dollar, two, three, four dollars. They're cheap. Uh, is that it, it automatically downloads the program to your phone every time a new one comes out. And if you're listening to Helena and I, uh, you know, bramble on and you get a call, it pauses the show. You take the call. And once the call is done, it starts the show back up again where we left off. So many of the ways you can listen on your smartphone when the phone rings, it goes back to the beginning and it drives you insane. 
So that's the reason <laughs> nah. that we recommend you download an application to listen to the show is because those podcast applications are designed to pause the show when something happens. Um, and Helene and I do not want you to miss a minute of us. So that will, and we also don't want to frustrate you either. So that's the easiest way to do it uh, is using one of those applications. So the other way you can listen to our shows, if you're if you have a smartphone or an iPhone rather, is through Hallway Feeds application. You just search for Hallway Feeds in the App Store, download it, and you'll see that uh, radio podcast uh, horse radio is at the top of their list there. And you can listen to all of our shows through their application as well. Now that's streaming, so you're going to have the pausing issue that we talked about. So that's not necessarily the the best way to listen to a podcast, but it is an option if uh, if you're stuck and have no other way to do it. So hallway feeds is an option as well. So that's uh, that's that's the different ways that you can listen to our show. Did I miss any? Uh, no. Okay. And then, then what I'm working on now, I wasn't listening to you. Yeah, you know what I'm working on now, and I'm going to try and get this resolved over the next couple of weeks. We're working on mobile versions of our websites so that when you go to there, instead of sit, you know, the tiny little text Ugh, yes. and everything, you know, because it has it doesn't have a mobile version. We're working on mobile versions for all of the websites. We're te- I'm testing out the different options now because I do want the player to still work. So when you go there so you can still have the player that will work. So I'm um, working on those now. So you know, it should make the websites much easier if you just go to the website address on your browser on your phone. So we're working on that too. You're working on that. Yes. yes. <laughs> Cause I'm you're the geek. On that now too. And, uh, you're the geek actually I'm now. getting a little help from John, the geek, my buddy, John, the geek. Oh, we love John, the geek. Yes. He's helping me out a little bit on that one too. So we are geek nation. Yes. We're equi geeks. We got to come up with a, too, so. what was the, um, the word, remember I made up a word the other day, the other year, like a few months ago, maybe last week. <laughs> I don't remember. I made up a word I and I said, for, I don't remember things. Oh God, Glenn, I forget it. Some, <laughs> it's somewhere buried behind the cobwebs of my brain. Well, it's, that's it. That's it, Helena. That's all Are, I have to say. I know you're done with me today. I'm that's done. it for, for this week. We're, we're going to have more next week. Um, so tune in, check our Facebook page at Stable Scoop to find out exactly what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks because you're going to be excited. You're going to want to tune in. <laughs> 